Well, we went digging, as we do, to Jordan, Montana. Actually, this fossil came from Glendive, Montana. This was our second dig, and this is a Triceratops condyle. Now, a condyle is a bone that is at the very end of the vertebral column before the skull. Remember, a, a Triceratops column is horizontal, right? So the condyle is this big softball-sized bone that hangs off the end of the vertebral column, and it supports the weight of the largest terrestrial uh, skull known, the Triceratops. So this is an important bone. It's under a lot of tension and stress. It supports the whole cranium. So we were very fortunate to collect this, and we decalcified it, which means we put it in a weak acid, the bones act just like normal bones. They dissolve in this weak acid, just like your bone. If you gave a biopsy at the hospital, they would do the same protocol. Soak it in this acid. Look at the soft tissues after the bone mineral falls away. And so that's what we did with this bone. What does that look like? Does that look like the avian model? Yeah. yeah. We have found nerves in Triceratops, Triceratops condyle. And so we published this uh, last month in March in the journal, as I mentioned. And the diagnostic feature is clear. Now, it's actually even clearer here. Wow. Why is that? Well, because this is lipids or fats, there's a term in forensics called grave wax. These things concrete on themselves over time. They kind of collapse and solidify. And that's one of the reasons why it's kind of hard sometimes to see the structure because of the deformity. But in this case, that cross-weave pattern was pulled apart a little bit as it desiccated and, and uh, dried. And so we're actually seeing the, connect the uh, connective tissue layer, this crosshatch pattern, very clearly. Not only did we find that, and we did find many examples of this, uh, we were prompted by this work to then go back and look at over 200 slides that we had previously decalcified uh, from many, six, I think, different individuals, all triceratops. We found nerves throughout all the slides that we had previously prepared. So we now feel that this is common as common as the blood vessels are. Not only did we find the nerves, but we were stunned to find the actual sheath separate floating in the decalcification solution. So this is now the sheath of connective tissue without the fascicles in it. And so we can really study the rotation, measure all this, study all the structure in it. Uh, it looks really cool in polarized light. Remember I showed you the fascicles, how they move down. And this, you can clearly see the wrapping uh, in these. And we found, found many examples of this different wrapping. So we know we're looking at dinosaur wrapping, uh, nerve wrapping. We know we're looking at dinosaur nerves. And we found fascicles, lots and lots of fascicles. Uh, this is a chicken compact bone fascicle. So remember those? wavy fascicles that we're moving. This is one of them. It's at high magnification. And you can see what in here, class? Bands of Fontana. Yeah? See them? What do you see in the condyle fascicle? Bands of Fontana. Same in the vertebra. This is a vertebra from Triceratops. We have found fascicles in every bone that we have examined for fascicles. And that's like 10 bones, 8 bones so far. By the way, this is our president, Keith Holcomb. Stand up, Keith. Keith is president of DISTRI, and take a moment to say hi to him when you can today, okay? Thank you. So we believe that uh, this is showing us that there is a ton of work to do. There's a lot of work to do, and so we're very excited about it. The last thing that we did in this paper is we took that nerve and we thin-sectioned it, as I mentioned it to you, like we did with the chicken nerve. We thin-sectioned it, but we, we made what are called serial sections. So this is one section right after the other, right after the other. It's hard to do, let me tell you, because these sections are one one-hundredth the diameter of a human hair, and a breeze will carry it away. So it's really careful work. 
But look at what we showed here. You can see the outer connective tissue layers with the grooves in them. Here's the grooves here, and they're showing up in the thin section now. We're seeing a fascicle underneath the connective tissue with the bands of Fontana in it. And the final section shows one vertical band of Fontana left from the fascicle that was sectioned. So we know we found nerves. We know that uh, this is from the condyle. We expect to find it in just about every bone we look at. We were honored in a great, great way for this paper. They gave us the cover of the journal. It is such an honor for us, and we're, we're so thankful. It, we're humbled, really, by this. But they recognize the work, and they're honoring it. We were really surprised last night to see the Microscopy Society of America publishes an annual buyer's guide that goes out to anyone, anywhere, who would use any microscopy equipment. And they put us on the cover of that as well. And we have plans to dig this summer in the Cretaceous. So we're going to go look for more Triceratops if we can, Nanotyrannus if we can. Uh, when you pick up this copy of Old Stretchy, the dinosaur bone cell, you'll see the blood clots in here that we found. Most of the bones that we have found, and I'm going to give you a little advertisement for today. <laughs> Permian has clots in it, so you've got to come back and see that. <laughs> So we show the clots in the, the uh, nanotyrannus as well as in the triceratops. So we're finding it in several individuals. So thank you. We can throw it open for Q&A now. I appreciate your time. Thank you. First of all, let's give an outstanding ovation. <laughs> Dr. Mark, you're a pioneer. And you're pioneering in the right direction with the right convictions. You mentioned uh, this afternoon you're going to speak on the Permian, blood clots in the Permian. So it'll be a, a different lecture altogether. Altogether new. You need to come back. You need to come early to get a good seat. Yep. Now, you mentioned an age, the standard evolutionary assignment of age. Uh, would you give that age and then just... Tell us in a whisper how old you think these bones really are. Um, the ages they give for the material that you saw today is 68 million years. The ages that they give for the material you're going to see uh, this afternoon is uh, 260, 220 to 300 million years old. And I will say this, you will see better preservation of nerves later than you have seen this morning. Oh my. Meaning? Meaning come back. Meaning come back. <laughs> and and the, the age factor, meaning they are not 225 million years old. They we believe be. they were all deposited at the same time. At the same time in a global flood, such as Dr. William Bowles mentioned in his lecture. There's only been one global flood and 20 uh, 18 feet below where you're sitting or standing, 18 feet below, is a Cretaceous limestone layer that extends worldwide as a sedimentary deposit. The only way you get, we have a number of geologists who would all agree with this, you get sedimentary deposit with the right material mixed in water, the water drains off, and the material solidifies. Uh, calcium carbonate, there's a chemical reaction. There has to be water involved, and the water has to disappear somewhere. So there was a worldwide flood. This has been absolutely astounding. 